My name is Kevin Flyke. I'm a proud father, husband, son, brother, director, Green Beret, and now MIT alumni. So I'd always felt compelled to serve our country, and then 9-11 happened and this went from a fascination more so to something that really seemed like my duty. The Green Berets are essentially like consultants for the United States military. You go to foreign countries to train their militaries and their militias. Uh, you serve on a 12-man team. And then in a case of like in Iraq or in Afghanistan, you actually fight alongside the soldiers that you're training. And so you can guarantee when you sign up for this job that the person to the left and right of you during the most intense periods of your life is not going to be an American. It's going to be a local national soldier that you've spent time training. And that is what really drew me uh, to this mission, to be able to be in tune with the culture of the people that I was working with. Seven months into my second Afghanistan rotation, you know, my team went and did a mission in the northwestern part of the country. And about an hour into that mission, we came under heavy fire. And so for the next 10 hours, we were battling back and forth in this valley in northwestern Afghanistan. And in the 10th hour of that fight, while going around the corner of a building, I felt like I had been hit in the stomach with a sledgehammer. And I realized pretty quickly that I had been shot in the stomach. You know, and in that moment there, you know, I thought that every minute that went by was going to be one of my last moments on this earth. And I was really surprised four days later when I, I asked someone if I had gone to heaven or hell. You know, and they said, neither. You're in Launchville Regional Medical Center in Germany. You know, initially, as soon as I was hurt and came home from the hospital, about a month after my initial injury, my wife bought me a book called How to Get into a Top Business School. And every day after going to physical therapy for six hours, I would come home and I would tear that thing apart, highlight things, make notes in the margins, and started to develop this plan. I made the decision there that you know I was gonna push forward no matter how hard this thing was. And it was even harder than I imagined. And I had an absolutely difficult brutal time getting off of my pain meds until my wife sat me down one day and said, you know, is this it? Is this what you're going to do with the rest of your life? And in that moment, that was really the impetus to continue to push forward there. I stopped taking my pain meds one day and I began studying for my grad school exams the next day. And when I came to MIT, I was obviously getting out of the military and just really was trying to figure out what was next for me. But during my recovery, things were brutal for me, but they were still going better than most others. Uh, so I'd work one-on-one -on -one with some of the wounded soldiers in my unit, and I really enjoyed being able to give back to them. And that really spawned into individuals asking me to come speak to like Boy Scout troops or churches. And then when I started at MIT in the fall, one of the classes was a communications class. And at the same time that I started at, at Sloan, I was asked to go back to Union College to speak on Veterans Day. So I used my entire time in my communications class to tailor the speech. Now it's really the first time going out there and telling my story. Incredibly nervous, you know, did a terrible job, but it was the beginning. Love you for me. You know, I believe that an experience is worth nothing unless you share it. I'm so thankful that I was actually able to go through those experiences because it allowed me to walk a mile in other people's shoes and experience addiction, depression, anxiety post-traumatic stress, things that I would have never experienced if I hadn't had this experience. And so now I have this ability to empathize with other people and understand what they go through in life so that I can relate to them and hopefully inspire them. And I think the ultimate message that I like to convey to people is that, you know, there is always a light at the end of the tunnel, no matter how dark it might seem. And for somebody who's been through hell and back, trust me, that light burns brighter than you can imagine once you get there.